Hey everybody. So I wanted to do a Leica M11 update um, on how the camera is doing, you know, since I got this body, uh, which is quite a while ago. I've had one or two lockups, period, um, you know, and no big deal. I did, I, you know, I have noticed that when I'm shooting outside, you know, for an event where it's really hot outside, if I go to look at the images on the screen, uh, I'll get a processing um, symbol up. It doesn't slow me down as far as shooting, but it slows me down as far as if I wanted to review the image. Um, so, you know, obviously there's a lot of heat in an enclosed body, which I believe that's what's doing it. Um, but if I just want to shoot, I just can keep shooting. I have no issue with it at all. It's just when I want to review the image. Um, and I don't do that very often, but I do do it. Anyway, um, the next thing is the 50 Sumalux, the 2023 version. Um, you know, I've been using this quite a bit. I, I don't think I've taken it off my camera uh, since I got it. And, and the last event I did, it was, <laughs> this is all I used. Um, it, and it worked out fantastic. It was a golf tournament and I think I had four out of focus images out of 400 that I shot. Um, I shot all day. I had to shoot all the teams on the course and then their dinner afterwards. Uh, that's why there were so many images. Uh, otherwise I usually don't shoot that much, but, um, you know, to have four, maybe five images out of focus, I'm thrilled with that. Um, and I did shoot action with the golf, uh, cause there was the golf pro there and, um, you know, he was helping people with their swings and so forth. Uh, you know, it's not like they're running, <laughs> it's, they're just swinging a club. I didn't notice any, you know, curved clubs when they were swinging, I, but I didn't really pay attention to it either. So, but all the images were stunning. Um, the, the club afterwards, you know, it was still daytime out. And obviously in the back of it, where there was less window light, I used a flash. Um, and I set the flash to manual. And I, I really want to go over this with you, um, you know, with using a flash, because I think it's important um, that, you know, manual flash is the best to use at an event. And I know a lot of people have issues with it, but, you know, I want to give you a little trick um, to help you with this and, and show the way I do it. Um, let me see if I have the flash and I'm going to show you this really quick. I don't have my Nike. I I don't have my Nikon flash, but I do have the the Godox um, V three hundred and fifty for Nikon, and this will work on this, uh, especially the way I'm doing it. So, I'll set my flash um, at an angle. Whether this, this event had a brown ceiling, so you know it's not going to make a difference. But I'll take the card and put it up um, when this is you know the case, and then I'll put the uh, diffuser over it. Uh, so it throws a little bit like forward um, and, you know, it, I get more coverage this way um, and it works fine. I'll set the flash to manual and right when I get in, I'll take an image of, of a person, like it could be a waitress or a waiter or whatever, um, just anybody there and say, I just want to get my light correct uh, for the event. Could you, you know, stand there for me? And you get your distance. So whatever distance you normally stand, you know, from someone that's what you're going to do. So you're going to set your ISO so you get some ambient light. Um, you know, maybe it's 400 or 800. Uh, and then you're going to set your flash to fill in the face. Um, that's it. So once that's set, you're ready to go. Now, there's two ways you can do this. And, you know, depending on what lens you have, and this is really important because some lenses have um, focus issues. They have, uh, you know, they go out of focus if you change the aperture. Um, you know, so that's why, you know, Leica came out with the floating lens element to, to solve this issue. Anyway, so you can either change your aperture. So you know that your aperture is this. So I'll set it at 2.8 or 3.5 because I want, you know, I want people in focus. 
and then I'll take the shot and that's my everything set. But if someone's a little further away or a little closer throughout the night, I know I have to go up or down and you could either just turn your dial on your flash really quick. So like it's all one step, you just turn it and then take the shot or you can change your aperture, you know, one stop up, one stop down to compensate for them being a little further or a little closer than that original shot. It's that simple. Um, and you just have to be close. You don't have to be exact because cameras have such leeway today. It, it doesn't matter. You know, if it's a little bit underexposed because you didn't turn it up enough because they were back too far, you're still going to be able to pull that out, but you're going to still have decent light. Now, if you try this and, and you can practice this at home, like, you know, stand in front of your wall and take the shot at night and then move back a little bit, move forward a little bit, and then just change your setting on your flash itself. Like you can go from, you know, if you're set, set at one eighth, you can go down to, you know, go up to one quarter or down to one sixteenth. Just practice it and see what works. Um, this is the easiest way that I found for on-camera flash and to get good solid exposure every time with the on-camera flash. And like I said, if you just if you have a decent lens and you don't mind going um, from you, you know 2.8 to 3.5 or 2.8 to f2, because they're usually in half stops anyway. You know that little bit will make the difference and and give you your correct exposure. Um, anyway, so now that I'm off topic on the M11, uh, the next thing is. Yes, you can shoot professional jobs with an M11. I've been doing it since I've got these. I have no issue with it whatsoever. I do carry, uh, like my Q2 as a backup. Um, you know, I love that camera and I can shoot just about anything with that, whether whatever kind of event I'm shooting it, it'll handle it if this happens to go down. Um, but I have no issues with this going down. It's been working fantastic. I really do love this uh, 50, by the way. It's, it, it is an upgrade. I, I, no matter what anybody says, you know, I, I, I watched some videos on this and they're like, well, the 50 really isn't that big of an upgrade and they're testing it on an M10. Now, they're both sharp, but you have to remember on an M10 versus an M11, there's different megapixels here. And we're looking for it resolving the, you know, the resolution. You know, how many lines of resolution will this lens resolve on this sensor versus an M10 sensor? They're two different animals. Um, you don't need that many lines of resolution compared to what you need for a 60 megapixel. Anyway, uh, so don't be afraid of this. You know, like I said before, it just takes practice. Um, and once you're proficient at it, you're going to love it. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's been doing great. I have no issues with it whatsoever. I hope the little flash tip helped. Um, and anyway, thanks for watching as always, and I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Oh, by the way, I'm going to do another video on this um, Reflex, Stella Pro Reflex light. Uh, I'm using it now, the light mesh, because <laughs> it actually works, and it's in the umbrella still. Um, but I have somebody coming in because I really want to do this. Um, I'll probably do this over the weekend. And, and play with this because I want, you know, the straight light up with the uh, Fresnel and the dome and all that kind of stuff. But I've been using it since the last video. I love this light. Um, you know, don't hesitate if you're looking for something like this. No, the flash is not as powerful as a speed light. It just, it isn't. But this kind of hybrid stuff and when I don't want to use a flash on top of the Leica I, and I just want to shoot natural, this is going to be spectacular. I can't wait to play with it more. Anyway, thanks again for watching.